Well, hi there, Internet. My name's Court, and you've got Courtside Seats for my review of WandaVision, Episode 6, All-New Halloween Spooktacular. Let's do it. Welcome back to my ongoing review series of WandaVision. If you've watched my reviews of the first five episodes, you know that I'm really digging this show and that I thought last week's episode was absolutely insane. It was bananas, it was awesome. This week's not that great. Let me rephrase, not that it's not that great. I mean, it's not that great, but this was a really good episode too. Having said that, there was one thing about this episode that really frustrated me. You probably can guess what it was, but we'll get there. But now as per usual, I gotta give you my caveat. This will be a spoilers review. I'm not gonna cover every single beat of the episode, but there are specific things that I wanna talk about. So if you haven't seen the episode yet and you wanna go in cold, go check it out. It's really good. Hopefully you'll come back later. But this is officially your spoiler warning. Cool? Cool. Moving on. I dug the vibe of the show within the show right off the bat. It was totally Malcolm in the Middle, even though I've never watched that series. I recognized it immediately, and I really liked that sort of early 2000s pop punk opening theme song. It's favorite one yet. It also made me really want a Brian Cranston cameo in this show, but alas, such is life. And right away we meet Billy and Tommy again. Last week it was driving me crazy. The short-haired one, I think it's Billy. I totally recognized him. I knew I knew him from somewhere. I forgot to look it up, but as soon as he spoke in this episode, it jogged my mind. It's little Luke from The Haunting of Hill House. That's awesome. And I dug that everyone was wearing their sort of comics accurate costumes for Halloween. That was fun. We see Wanda and Viz get into a bit of an argument about Vision not taking the kids trick or treating, and they kind of play it off like it's no big deal. But that said, there was that little moment. It was so small, but just before Vision leaves, he looks at Wanda and he says, be good. And like there was straight up pleading in his eyes. I loved that. Also during the trick or treating, I never would have caught this. My buddy Nimi caught it, he told me. But one of the kids says kick ass and then Wanda says kick ass. And that was a straight up nod because the other guy who played Quicksilver played kick ass. And this guy who played Quicksilver was also in that movie. So that's cool. Good sleuthing, my friend. I also really enjoyed seeing Jimmy and Monica kicking some ass. That was great. One of my favorite moments in the episode was when Vision is sort of on the outskirts of town and he sees that woman putting up the Halloween decorations and she's like caught in a loop, like a glitch. And her face is totally straight, but she's got the one tear rolling down. Like that was dark. Speaking of dark, the Yo Magic commercial, the claymation commercial, and the kid dying and rotting into a skeleton because he couldn't get the yogurt open, that was grisly. It really reminded me of this creepy sequence from a kid's movie that I loved when I was little that like nobody's ever seen. It's called The Adventures of Mark Twain. But do yourself a favor, you're already on YouTube. Do yourself a favor after you finish this video, of course. But type into YouTube, creepiest scene from any kid's movie, Adventures of Mark Twain. Enjoy, buckle up. Let me know what you thought. I will say this time around, I didn't understand the relevance or the significance of this particular commercial, but maybe that'll get explained in time. Now, throughout this episode, we see Wanda quizzing Pietro about their childhood, where his accent went, and it's clear that she doesn't fully trust him. He's also fairly transparently digging at her for info about how she's controlling all of this, so I'm not sure I entirely trust him either. Then the other thought is there's a moment there where, like Vision, she sees him as a corpse for a moment. So it begs the question, did Sword just throw his body into the perimeter and then she reanimated him as well? I don't know. My other favorite moment of this episode was the scene with Agnes and Vision at the barrier. I'd been really waiting for this scene because it was the moment in the trailer that made me go, okay, I'm on board with this show. It was such a creepy, kind of almost visceral sequence and Katherine Hahn crushed it. Now Monica keeps mentioning her guy and so it feels like they're really building to some kind of a reveal, like it's gonna be a character that we know. And if it's just some guy, I'm gonna be really disappointed. It does also seem that they're pretty much suggesting that Monica is gonna be getting her powers and that that's happening as a result of her going through the barrier and more on that later. But Vision forcing his way through the barrier was like brutal and it was sad and I actually thought he might die again. But I love the way that he said help. It felt kind of out of character to me. And then a moment later he goes, the people need help. And I feel like this is kind of foreshadowing the idea that Sword doesn't care about the people of this town. They just want Vision back to bend him to their will. I could be wrong, but we'll see. I mean, it does seem like Hayward's a pretty bad guy. Now, earlier in the episode, we see Tommy manifesting his speed powers, but now we see Billy's as he can hear Vision in his head and almost see through his eyes. And Wanda goes full on boss mode and starts expanding the bubble. And not just making it bigger, making it huge. The amount of power this woman has just seems to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the music in this scene was the same music 
that played when Wanda confronted Sword at the barrier last episode, and it really sounds like a supervillain theme, and I love it. Now, I was initially a little bit confused as to why everything that got sucked into the hex had like a carnival theme, but I guess that's just the way Wanda sees Sword as a circus full of clowns, and that's actually kind of fun. We see Darcy go in, although we don't know what becomes of her, and I loved the shot of the helicopter becoming the hot air balloon. That was awesome. But here's the big question. If it turns out that Monica got or will get her powers as a result of going through the barrier, does that mean that all of these people who now got sucked in will be mutated into having abilities? And if so, that would mean that this marvelous universe is about to have a huge influx of characters that have been mutated into having powers. I think you see what I'm implying here. Westview will have a serious problem with overpopulation. My one big issue with this episode, the part of it that really frustrated me, as I'm sure many of you have guessed, was the ending. How dare you stop it there? Every other episode so far has had a satisfying ending. Here, like, I, I, I felt so frustrated. I actually literally yelled at my TV, and I straight up called the show a jerk. Next week cannot get here soon enough. I can't believe we only have three episodes left already. It feels like there's so much more to be told in like three 30, 40 minute episodes. But I really enjoyed this one. It was fun, it was creepy, it was exciting. Man, this show rocks. So those are my thoughts on WandaVision episode six. Now I wanna know, what did you guys think about the episode? What was your favorite moment in this one? Whatever your thoughts, hit the comments below. Let's discuss. If you enjoyed this review, please smash that like button and give it a share if you really enjoyed it. And hey, why not take a second, do me a favor, click subscribe and ring that bell to subscribe to my channel for more movie reviews, entertainment news, trailer reactions, all that good stuff. Hope you guys are all safe and healthy. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Take care.